Okay, I would like to um, tell you about the force due to an electric field on a point charge, um, the torque due to an electric field on a set of charges, and then um, I want to just tell you the, the information you get from looking at electric field lines. I want to um, get that clear with you. Okay, so let's first deal with um, the force due to an electric field that's in the, the force on a charge that's in an electric field. Okay, so um, here's an electric field. Now, um, I, I know that the field is this way, so that if I put a positive test charge there, it's going to zip that way. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a negative charge here. A negative charge. Um, I'm, let's make up a field. Let's say this field is, um, let's say the field here is 4 newtons per coulomb. And I go ahead and I'm going to drop a two coulomb charge here, which is incredibly huge, but but we'll just we'll just uh, make the numbers easy. So this charge right here that I'm putting in here, Q1, it's two coulombs and it's um, it's negative. And so uh, I want you to know that this field right here is not caused by this. This charge has its own field. Um, it would be radially inward. There'd be all these these arrows going inward because that's the direction a positive charge would go. But this field is from some external uh, set of charges. In fact, we know just by the field that there must be a bunch of positive charges over that way to the right and then a bunch of negative charges over to the left to set up a field like this. Okay, so what is the force on this charge? The force on this charge is first of all it's that way and I'm going to get that just by knowing that a negative charge goes opposite to the field. And then the field strength is going to be the force on the charge um, divided by the charge itself. Force on Q divided by Q. And so um, if I want to know the force, it's just going to be Q times E. In other words, if there's four newtons for every coulomb you put in there, won't there be eight newtons of force on this? There sure will be. There's going to be um, two coulombs. We'll put a we'll put an absolute value sign here. This is just giving me the magnitude. So it's going to be two coulombs times four newtons per coulomb. You see that the coulombs cancel, and we're left with eight newtons of force. That's the electrical force on Q1. Okay, now it turns out that if we have um, something called a, a, um, an electric dipole, then um, let's say we have a field, again this is um, 4 newtons per coulomb, let's say. And um, let's say I put um, a pole here that's perpendicular, and I put a charge on each end. And um, let's make this charge um, negative 2 coulombs, and we'll make this charge here, this will be a negative, this will be a positive 2 coulombs. Well, you see that um, this side is going to be pulled this way. It's going to go with the field because it's positive, and this side is going to be pushed opposite to the field. Now they should be pushed the same amount though because they're equal in magnitude. Um, let's call this distance D. And so um, this is going to rotate about this axis. It will rotate about that axis. And so um, the torque that's due to these is going to be R cross F plus R cross F. So the torque is going to be um, the electric force times D over 2 because uh, you're taking the part of the force that's perpendicular uh, that's the part of the force that's perpendicular to the um, lever arm. So it's all perpendicular. So it's going to be D over 2 plus the electric force again this one Fe times D over 2. So that's going to be um, the electric force. If you remember from the last one, it's just going to be Q times E. So the electric force is um, Q times E 
The counterpart to that in mechanics is the magnetic, uh, gravitational force rather, not magnetic, the gravitational force is m is um, g times m, where this is the gravitational field. Oh boy, I messed that up. The electric field. I should really write that as m times g. Okay, so that's going to be um, 4 times 2 is 8. So it's going to be 8 um, newtons times, let's make this um, 2 meters. So it's going to be 8 newtons times 1 meter plus 8 newtons times 1 meter. So that's going to be 16 newton meters. Or if you look at the equation, the torque on an electric dipole then is going to, at least the maximum torque. The, the, the torque, as this starts to spin, it has less torque on it. It will get less torque. But at first, the maximum torque is just going to be um, the, the electric force times um, D, because uh, the halves will combine to give you a whole D. So that would be um, QE times D. This gives you the maximum torque. You'd have to put in a sine of theta there to get the other, the, uh, for the other times, for the other locations. Okay, so that's um, the torque that's on an electric dipole. Okay, now um, if you have electric field lines like this, then um, you know which, which one of these is positive and which one's negative. Because uh, remember that a positive test charge is going to zip this way then. It will zip around like this. And so uh, electric field lines always go in toward the negative charges. We know that's negative. And they always go away from the positive charges. Just by the definition of what an electric field is. The other thing you know about this is that the, the closer the lines are together, the stronger the field the more densely packed these arrows, these lines, the, the stronger the field. So the field's real strong here. They're really densely packed. But out here, they're not very densely packed. So strong field, weak field. Very weak field out here. Okay? So um, just to reiterate, if I have something like this, um, these lines are roughly evenly spaced. So I'm going to tell you the electric field E is uniform. It's not, it doesn't change when you move around in here. It's always that way and it's, and it's about the same size. Whereas here, the electric field is much stronger right here. So if I put a positive test charge here, it might have a big force this way. But if I put it here, it would have a slightly less force. And if I put it here, it would have an even smaller force. Okay, one other thing. Let me tell you where they come up with these lines. What these are, to get to figure out how they get these lines in the first place, um, is you put a positive test charge, say, right here, and then you use the principle of superposition. So if this is a positive test charge, this charge is being pushed by this guy this way. I want that to be radially that way. And then it's not being put, it's being pulled by this guy. But not as much, so it's being pulled a, a little less because it's further away. When you add those two vectors, you get something that looks like that. It's along that line. How about over, um, how about over here? Now it's being pulled a lot this way. And it's being pushed a little bit this way. And so that gives you um, a vector that looks like that. And so that's why these have the, the vectors they do. If I put a charge here, it's going to be pulled by this guy. And it's going to be repelled by this guy. Not as much, but those two add to give you a nice straight line across. All right, that's electric field lines.